Hi, this is David McCam for WebTNG. In this video, I'm looking at xCloud. xCloud is a new hosted control panel for managing virtual private servers. It's been developed by the WP developer team, and the founder of WP Managed Ninja is also a partner. They've just launched the service, and in this video, I want to do an overview and walkthrough. In the walkthrough, I want to add a VPS to xCloud, and then I want to add a WordPress website. So I think this will give people an idea of what the control panel looks like and the kind of features it has. To use xCloud, this control panel, you're going to need a virtual private server. And they have an automated installs for Vulture, Google Cloud Platform, and DigitalOcean. You can also bring your own virtual private server from some other provider, and then they have a script you can run. And so it's a little bit of a manual option, and that's actually what I'm going to try. So if you want to use one of these three, then that would probably be a little bit easier to set up. You can see down here they have their pricing plan. Now, Another option besides getting the virtual private server yourself, setting up the account yourself, and then bringing the credentials over to xCloud, is they also have a service where they will provide the virtual private server. Okay, and so that's what this option is here when it's the xCloud managed server. Then the other option is that you manage your own server. This would be the regular subscription pricing that they have. Okay, they do have a free trial, and I understand that you can start with a free trial and then upgrade to the lifetime deal. So that might be something to ask about if you're interested in the free trial. And then these are the costs per month, and then the price per server goes down here as you have more servers. Then they also have a lifetime deal. I guess this is for a limited time. So to be able to manage two servers is $99, up to seven is $299, up to 15 is $599, and up to 50 is $999, and $1,999. You know, they do have servers in different locations. And then here are some of the highlights of their service, have full access, it comes with Redis caching built in. The xCloud stack, their install and script is installing Linux, Nginx, PHP, and MySQL, and Redis. They're going to keep those up to date for you. You're going to bring a virtual private server. The virtual private server needs to be a recent version of Ubuntu. They do have some utilities and things for server and site migration. I'm not going to use those. And another kind of cool thing is that you can have a team associated with your account. So that's nice. I think that's a higher tier feature over at RunCloud. And we talked about migration. That's the overview here. Here's a link to the documentation. You know, this just launched like two days ago. They've got pretty good docs for being brand new. Having said that, this is an area, you know, server management, you know, setting up a control panel for a VPS and whatnot. This is a place where you will want good documentation. They do have a chat help here. And if you click the help button, it opens an email. So I don't think they have ticketed support yet. Could be wrong, but I didn't see ticketed support yet. Okay, so here's the FAQ. Here's some troubleshooting help and things like that. Okay, so I've logged in here. I've already paid, you know, and it's saying, hey, you know, start out, let's add a server. Makes sense. Here's a link for all servers. Here's a link for sites. Here's a search. Here's a place for notices. Here's news. Here is where you go to see the profile, the team settings, the billing, payment documentation, and you can have light and dark mode. Okay, let's go to profile here first. 
It's your contact information. Now for security, you can change the password. You have the option, I think, for two-factor authentication. And I think you can kill off all of your browser sessions here to have a logout from everything. Team management, you, know, you can add team members. This is where you would add your SSH key. These are the integrations, your service provider. They have integration with Cloudflare. So that's built in here, which is nice for people who want to take advantage of Cloudflare. You can set up storage provider here. I think they just have one option now, maybe AWS, but they're going to add more. And you have an option for email provider. You know, if you have shared hosting, a lot of times that comes with an email account. Generally, a lot of agencies really recommend that you use something like Microsoft or Google Mail or Zoho Mail or something like that, rather than trying to host it yourself, because that can be a pain. However, you know, your websites need to send emails. You have transactional emails when, you know, someone submits your contact form or maybe you get notified if there's an error on your site or other events like that. And so they have this option here to set up the email provider. They recommend Mailgun or SendGrid as kind of good ones uh, if you're going to be having the high volume. But they also offer their own service here. And so what they're doing is they're giving the option for a thousand transactional emails for a dollar a month, which is really cheap. You know, you can update that, of course, if you're going to send more email. Okay, it depends on how many servers and users and things you have. But that's nice kind of gap filler there if you don't have a provider that you can set up and use already. All right, then, um, so here's the billing. Here's the subscription. Here's notifications, your events. And you can archive a server. I'm not sure exactly how that works, and I didn't see any docs on it. Kind of interesting. Okay, now I think we're ready to go to the dashboard and try to install our site. So you're going to need a few things to get started here. So for the self-hosted option, we're going to need a VPS. And when you sign up for a VPS, you get an IP address, and you get a username and password to log in to that VPS to manage it. And you're also going to get credentials, a username and maybe an SSH key that you set up or password. But you're going to need those um, three pieces of information for your VPS, IP address, username, and credentials. Then you're also going to need a site. You're going to need a domain name. And you're going to want your domain name pointed to the IP address of your VPS. Does that make sense? You're hosting your WordPress sites on the VPS, so they're going to have the IP address of that VPS. Okay, so you're going to need that stuff, you know, before you kind of go through this process. So what we're going to do here is I look through the docs, and they have, you know, how to set up with DigitalOcean, with Vulture, with Google Cloud Platform, or to connect an existing fresh Ubuntu server. And that's what I'm going to do. I got a server from RackNerd. RackNerd is pretty inexpensive if you get one of their deals. It's probably not the top, top tier of VPS providers. I think UpCloud might be one of the better ones. But for my purposes, you know, I don't have a WooCommerce store and going to be using these for tutorials and things like that. Rack Nerd's just fine for me. Okay, and then here it's telling you what you'll need for your server. You're going to need to have, you know, a server with two gigabytes of memory. And you're going to want to use Ubuntu 22.04. Okay, and you need to use AMD or Intel CPU. All right, you need to have these ports open, which I think they are on most. If not, it's pretty easy to open them up on the account from your VPS provider. 
we've signed up for xCloud and then we need to go and set up our first server and we're going to choose other provider here. All right, so we're going to connect our existing server and then we paste in our public key if we're using SSH keys and then it's going to go through the install process. Okay, if we're lucky, it's going to complete all the way. And they're reminding you to configure your email server also. Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard. I'm going to do add new. Okay, I'm going to do other provider. So I'm going to name the server Lasker after the great chess champion, Emmanuel Lasker. I'll add the IP address, the SSH username. You can give it a tag if you want to group your servers. And I'm going to enter the root password and check that I've created a new server and click Next. Okay, and it's now going through the process of setting up the server. Looks like it's working so far. It's going to take a little while, so I'll pause the video and resume it when this finishes. Awesome, server provision successfully. As they say in the movies, we're in. Okay, so let's look around now our dashboard now that we have a server showing our IP address, the provider, the plan. Saying budget self-managed doesn't really appeal to me. It should just say self-managed, I think. Then we have our MySQL version, the RAM on the server, the server operating system, disk usage. So that's looking good. Let's just look at these actions here. We can view sites, add sites, restart server, restart Nginx, restart MySQL, archive server, and delete server. Here we have database. So we don't have one added yet. We've got SUDO users. So we would add one here. I think you can do one for each site. We're going to install the sites next. We have monitoring tab. Okay, nothing much yet because we haven't really started. Logs. So we don't have a log yet, I guess. Error log. All right, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. Events. PHP settings. Okay, so this looks pretty good we might need to tweak this some um, the memory limit might want to go up and the max file upload size perhaps i'm pretty sure we probably want to bump that up server management so we can restart the services server name we can change the name but this isn't editable here Okay, and settings. So I think I'm going to have to go to the server control panel to change the time zone. Do that. I think it'll require the server to reboot, so I won't do it right now. And now let's add our new site. We have our option to install a new site, clone a get repo, migrate an existing site, manually upload a WordPress site. Upload a zip file, so it'll be interesting what format that would need to be in. Or we can migrate a full server. So let's install a new website. Okay, and the site title is going to be WP Site Demos. I guess we'll call it Production. 
So we can go live or go to a staging environment. Our domain name is WP site demos.com and I think we would perhaps use this if we were going to what, add www or subdomain maybe now we can add DNS and SSL certificate on Cloudflare if we want so I have that set up already do I want to enable SSH yes Let's view my DNS to see what that says. Awesome. Okay. And now this may be combined full page and redis caching. So it's going to be interesting. I'll leave it on for now. But it's good to keep in mind that you have this caching going if during development you start to see some odd behavior. And right now, it's set up to use this free 100 emails a month. And I'll leave that on for now. I can change it later. Then it's got uh, admin, username, password, email address, WordPress latest version, PHP version, site owner. That's the owner at the Ubuntu OS level. Having a separate user per site is a good practice. We can have a deploy script. This is interesting. Uh, might be a useful feature. Create the database or add your own. And we have the database name, the database user, and the database password. So I tweak the user credentials there. And now I'm going to next. Okay, and it's saying it's doing the setup. So it's set up. Okay, this is nice. We can toggle this off if we need to. Here we have backup. It's going to show, I guess, if there are updates available. Here we have the primary domain. We can add domain. We can view Cloudflare integration. We have our logs. We have up here, they wanted a site user. And then we have the domain, the SSL certificate updates. Let's go to backups. Previous backups, backup settings. So select bucket. We would need to add a storage provider. Okay, so we don't have that. So we're not going to have any remote backups, local backup settings. Okay, so this will, I guess, do a backup to the server. I'm going to use Blog Vault, so I'm not going to get into this right now, but it's good for people to know that this is here. Monitoring, redirection. Okay, so I'm wondering if these are going to add the rules to Nginx or something. If so, that would probably be faster than doing it inside of WordPress. Here's where we can tweak the email provider. I'm guessing this is a WP config editor. Here we have access details, caching, logs, events, and settings. So let's look at settings. We can change the PHP version. We can edit the site tags. We can disable Nginx file regeneration. We can turn on PHP execution in the upload directories. And we can enable XML RPC. So those are turned off by default, so that's good security. We can edit the XFrame options. I think that's for directives given to the browser. By default, xCloud cron is on. You can manage the cron here. And then we can turn on basic authentication or we can delete the site. All right, so that's our site overview. Now we have a magic login here to go into the site. This is interesting because I thought I filled it all out, so it was going to fill this in, but maybe those 
settings were not on the WordPress level. So let's fill this in. I'll add an username and password and my email. And for right now, I'll discourage search engines and we'll install WordPress. Okay, so we're in now to the WordPress admin. So that was pretty straightforward. And now we have a site. That's the setup walkthrough. Now let's conclude with a bit of discussion. I want to start out by saying that I was impressed by the depth and polish of xCloud at launch. So there are some rough spots that I noticed that I'm going to talk about, but I don't want those to detract from what I think is a really good achievement, first impression, first release. So here are the things that I think could use some attention. First, when we look at the home page and at the server setup options as well, we see that it was possible to provision your VPS through xCloud. Now, presumably, that is the managed option. Then there's the option to sign up for DigitalOcean, Vulture, and the Google Cloud platform through xCloud. And finally, there's the option to bring your own VPS. Now, there isn't much information on these three options on the home page. For example, what's included in the managed option? And I think clarity is needed so that users can better compare convenience and pricing options. And that's probably a missed sales opportunity for xCloud because they're not communicating their value. Speaking of options and value, let's take a look at the pricing. I'm going to compare with RunCloud because that's what I'm familiar with. Of course, RunCloud has been around for a long time, so it's more mature. But I'm just kind of looking at basic features and price. Now, I want to point out that there's not a one-to-one -one comparison because the tiers are based a little bit differently. For example, RunCloud you have different features in the higher tiers than you have in the basic tier. Whereas with xCloud, we've been told the only difference between the tiers is the number of servers. With that in mind, let's just look at some pricing here. The RunCloud basic plan is for one server, $80.04 a year. Okay, the annual pricing starter plan for xCloud is two to five servers for $60 a year. So just based on that kind of simple comparison, the starter plan annual pricing looks pretty good. If we jump down to the xCloud launch LTD pricing, the entry package is two servers for $99 for lifetime. And that is also a great deal. You break even in just a little more than a year in relation to the RunCloud basic plan. If we look at the RunCloud Pro plan, it's $150 a year for unlimited servers. So the xCloud annual pricing professional 6 to 10 servers is $48 a year per server. Okay, so that works out to $480 a year for 10 servers. So I have a harder time seeing the value of that. If we go down to the launch LTD pricing, the budget package, seven servers for $299, that's twice the price of the annual Pro RunCloud package. So that also seems like a good deal to me, and that's the package I got. If we go then to the xCloud annual pricing for agency, 11 plus servers, $36 a year, um, or $720 a year for 20 servers. So that also doesn't seem like quite as good a deal. Now, maybe over time, xCloud will add more features that will be included in these packages, and so then that would be a different calculation. If we drop down to the xCloud launch LTD pricing, the growth package, 15 servers for $599, that's four times the annual pro package at RunCloud. So we're kind of stretching the value there. And then if we look at the performance for 50 servers for $999 and Supreme 250 servers for $1,999, 
that's even harder to appreciate. So for me, the sweet spot for xCloud annual pricing is a starter. If you have five or fewer servers, it's a good deal. And for the LTD pricing, the sweet spot was the entry or budget and maybe the growth package. That's kind of my look at the pricing there. I didn't compare the managed or the provisioning of the VPS from xCloud and compare pricing with the DigitalOcean and the other VPS providers. So those are different calculations that people who are interested in that will need to make. The next area which I thought was important is security and firewall. I noticed in the xCloud docs there's a mention of fail to ban to help counter brute force attacks. And I also saw a mention of a Linux firewall. It's possible those are roadmap items because I don't see any interface for them in the dashboard UI. I think security is important and hopefully security is one of the first missing pieces or rough spots that can be added quickly. Finally, we have the importance of support and a track record. I didn't see any mention of the level of support being offered. Presumably xCloud isn't going to help you if you have a plug-in conflict or something like that. I would guess that their support is going to help you with installation issues and with issues that might be related to the configuration of the services in their stack and things you might see in the PHP and Nginx logs. But it would be good to have that spelled out so that people can set their expectations. In terms of support, I think a top priority for the xCloud team should be establishing a reputation for Stellar support. That'll be something that will really make or break a platform like this. As I said in the beginning of this discussion, xCloud is remarkably full-featured and well-polished, being that we're in the first few days. So kudos to the WP developer and xCloud teams for a great launch. So that's my walkthrough first look at xCloud. I hope you found this of value. There is a text summary available on the WebTNG website along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.